How's it going, everybody? So, as the title obviously kind of gives away, what I want to do today is I want to talk about getting started in specialty coffee because there's a huge rabbit hole. You can spend thousands of dollars very easily getting, you know, into espresso machines and different types of brewing methods, but I want to talk about the first steps. And I'm talking about going from like, you know, just a regular drip coffee maker or a K-cup, you know, Keurig situation, all that type of stuff to, you know, starting to grind fresh, starting to be more involved in the process of creating your coffee and um, really just kind of getting you started because it can be very high maintenance and there can be a lot of room for error, but there's a few ways that I think are a little more foolproof. And so I wanna talk about those today. But before we get started, I just wanna say that I've loved the dialogue that's been happening in the comments, um, people giving me suggestions or just giving me feedback. It's been a great time talking shop and talking about coffee, so please keep it coming. All right, now where there may be a lot of room for discussion and people might have different opinions, I'd like to talk about the brewing method that I would say is a great place to begin, and that is the French press. The French press is super easy. It is technically a pour over method, but there's a difference between percolation and immersion. Percolation is when you're pouring water over coffee that has a filter and it kind of draws through. And immersion, as it sounds, you just pour water into a thing and the coffee just kind of sits there for a bit and it just kind of brews inside of the water. There have been tests done that have shown that immersion it's just less finicky. There's, there's more room for error if the grind size isn't just perfect or the flow rate isn't as, like, you know, just, just perfectly fine. There's a lot more wiggle room to get a good cup of coffee. Now, can you get as detailed and clear and clean flavors as you can from a percolation method? I would say no, but I, I still use a French press. I genuinely enjoy the types of coffee that you can get. And a lot of it can depend too on the types of uh, beans that you're buying, that if you get stuff that's a little more nutty, a little more chocolatey, which is probably what you're more used to anyways with your other types of brewing methods you've done before, then I would say that the French press is a really great launching point. And you know, there's a lot of different ways to go. If you wanna get more into espresso, you can. If you wanna get more into uh, percolation methods, you can. But kind of starting at French press, I think is a really good just basic platform for understanding specialty coffee. Now there are a few other reasons why I would suggest a French press and one of them is the starting cost. It's so cheap to get a French press. You can get a, a really solid one for between 20 bucks and 50 bucks. And you're gonna, you know, there's not gonna be much of a difference between, you know, getting like a super expensive one and a, and a cheaper one. It'll, it'll make a good French press coffee. It's just a matter of finding the recipe you like that's really gonna make the difference in, when it comes to preparing your coffee. It's also cheap because there's other parts of preparing coffee and other tools you'll be using that you don't need as high quality of. For instance, you don't need a gooseneck kettle for a French press where you're gonna need one of those for percolation brewing. But um, it, you can just kind of take a cheap kettle that you already have and you can boil water and you can put the water in and you can start getting into electric kettles and things like that that are kind of higher quality as you go and as you expand in your journey when it comes to brewing coffee. Now, speaking of other coffee gear for getting started, there are really four major components, like physical components. There's the brewing method that you're using. There's a food scale, which is crucial. There is a kettle and then there's a grinder. Those are kind of the four things you're gonna absolutely need in order to really create quality specialty coffee. Now, since we've already kind of touched on the subject of kettles, let's, let's go into it a little more. I personally have an electric gooseneck kettle that I can get the temperature just right where I want it. And I love that. I had a cheaper gooseneck kettle and the thermometer kind of just crapped out on me. And so I couldn't even like, once it got to 190, the, the kind of gauge would sort of just wiggle and it wouldn't even show me what the temperature was anymore. So there's definitely something to be said about buying something more expensive. And if you're going into other forms of brewing besides the French press, you'll definitely want to upgrade your kettle. But it's not really the first thing on the list when it comes to spending a lot of money. You can start, especially if you've got a French press, you can just start with a regular kettle, put water in it, and then just heat it up and then you're, you're good to go. Now the third tool that you're gonna be using, cause we got our brewing method, we've got our kettle, and now let's talk about the food scale. 
I got a really nice food scale. It's the Acacia Pearl S, and it's got a lot of bells and whistles. There's literally an app. There's a, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do with it, and it's accurate. It is crazy accurate to like a tenth of a gram. With French press, because again, this is kind of the platform. With French press, there's also more wiggle room for not getting the water to coffee ratio just right to where you start tasting really over or under extracted or really weak or strong coffee. There's a little bit more uh, liberty there where with percolation methods like a V60 or a Chemex or different things like that, that there's just a little bit less room for error and there's, there's more fine tuning that needs to happen. So with a food scale, if you start with a French press, you can also start with a super cheap food scale that's gonna be, you know, at least moderately accurate by like the grams or whatever, but it doesn't have to be so fine tuned in the same way. Um, again, I started with a really cheap food scale and it served me well for a while until I started wanting a little more accuracy and then I just kind of grew into it. So I would say with getting started, you can start making good quality specialty coffee with a low quality uh, food scale. Now, this is where I would spend your money. Like if you're gonna get into specialty coffee and you wanna create high quality coffee, this is just what you gotta do. You gotta spend money on a at least decent, if not high quality coffee grinder. Now, when I say high quality, I mean, you'd be better off paying $300 and up than buying a cheap grinder and just getting cheaper coffee. When you've just, when you just wanna have an elevated coffee experience and you wanna just enjoy the coffee more, it's so hard to do with a cheap grinder. I'll give you an example. I got like an $180, and that's not even that cheap, but I got an $180 electric grinder. And it's, I think it was a Breville. Yeah, it's a, it was a Breville. And I was trying to dial in my coffee and I was getting sour flavors. I was getting bitter flavors. Sometimes I was getting both. And I really just, it almost made me quit a little bit. Like I almost didn't want to make coffee anymore because I was making regularly bad coffee with, with good quality coffee beans and a method that I really trusted. And so I just didn't know what to do. And when I further investigated, I was looking at the particles from, uh, from grinding the beans and there was a lot of fines in there and there was a lot of coarse pieces, like we call them boulders. And what that does is each of those pieces will create either a over extracted or under extracted, depending on the size. If, they're, if it's a finer um, grind, then you're more likely to get over extracted coffee. And then if it's bold, if they're bigger, then you're more likely to get um, under extracted coffee. And sometimes I was getting both in one cup of coffee. So obviously it was really just not a good experience. So I switched to a higher quality um, manual hand grinder because when it's manual, there's less moving parts. There isn't a motor and things like that. So the money goes towards the more minimalistic things like the fundamentals and you get really high quality fundamentals. So I purchased a $250, $300 hand grinder and it changed everything about the coffee. I could like get it right where I wanted and just really enjoy the experience. That if, if there's something that made all the difference, it was definitely the grinder. Um, so definitely don't go cheap on your coffee grinder. If you're gonna go with an electric grinder and you just don't wanna do the work of grinding manually, cause it is work, um, I would recommend on the low end, the Barazza Encore, which is like, I think it's like $170, $180. But I'd start heading up from there. I, I wouldn't really go too cheap on an electric or manual hand grinder because if there's anywhere, in my opinion, to spend your money and really spend it, like just go a little over the top, definitely go with the, with the grinder. Now there are two components to your actual cup of coffee. We've talked about the tools, now let's talk about the ingredients. Coffee and water. Those are the two things that make up coffee, your, your coffee beans and your water. There are lots of roasters out there and there's, gosh, it's really hard to know exactly where to start. So what I would recommend first is see if there's a local roaster that is really kind of just pushing the boundaries or that maybe they're just kind of on that upper tier. Of, um, of, of coffee roasters. And if you even told me, okay, in the comments, 
if you ask like, hey, is there a coffee roaster near me that you trust? I've been to a lot of coffee shops and I've done a lot of research. So please feel free to ask. And I would let you know, like if you're in Dallas or if you're in Denver or if you're in Florida, I can, I can more than likely at least direct you towards somewhere local if you wanna just support a local coffee shop. Now, if you live in a place where there isn't that available, there's a few different, like just higher end um, roasters. Like, I, honestly, I would probably recommend Intelligentsia first. They are a fantastic roaster and they, they're very, they have a lot of influence in this country. So what I would say is there's some subscriptions that you can do with different coffee roasters and Intelligentsia has one where you actually do get cheaper coffee and you can, you can suggest like, hey, I'd like a bag of coffee every three weeks and that subscription will just keep bringing you coffee in. So that's one less thing that you have to worry about, which is kind of nice. And lastly, the water. It makes a difference what kind of water you use. If you just use tap water, it's not gonna, it's gonna feel off. Like there's something kind of amiss about your coffee. I mean, think about it. 98% of what you're drinking when you drink coffee is water. So you definitely don't wanna just throw whatever water in there. You wanna be more intentional. Um, I use bottled distilled water, and then I add what's called third wave water, which is kind of like this little powder packet of like different minerals and stuff that actually helps to bring out the flavor of coffee. That's over the top and you don't have to do that. Before that I was using spring water and I really liked that. Um, but if you have a high quality filtration system, you could probably get away with it. But um, I don't know, I, I wouldn't start with tap water. If you have other options, I would definitely go for some type of filtered water or spring water. But that's it for this video. Please let me know in the comments if there's any brewing methods you've been looking at and seeing, oh, that looks cool. I wonder how that would work. Maybe I have an opinion on it or maybe we could just uh, learn more together. But yeah, let me know if there's anything, maybe you have been in the coffee industry for a little while and you've, you've dabbled in different brewing methods and maybe you totally disagree with me and that's totally fine. But um, I'd love to have the conversation one way or the other. So yeah, that'll about do it. So. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're drinking excellent coffee and I hope you have a great rest of your day.